you are here on the face of a sphere that circles the center at approximately 1,000 miles per hour, that is 17 miles per second. Now, right now, you and me are traveling in a combination of directions. Earth's surface rotates around the equator at 1,000 miles per hour. Earth orbits around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour. Our solar system speeds around our galaxy at 448,000 miles per hour. Our Milky Way galaxy speeds through space at 1,300,000 miles per hour. The total of all of these is 1,816,000 miles per hour. That is 30,267 miles per second. And we are still not traveling anywhere near the speed of light, which is 669,600,000 miles per hour, or 186,000 miles per second, six times the total of all our speeds combined. Light takes 1.29 seconds to travel from the moon to Earth. Light takes 8.3 minutes to travel from the sun to Earth. Light takes 13 hours to travel from the sun to the edge of our solar system. That tells you just how vast even our own little solar system is. What do you see when you look up at the moon? There is a difference between looking and seeing. Looking means you are focusing in a direction. Seeing means you know or observe something about what you're looking at. When I look up, I see the moon traveling at 2,300 miles per hour around the Earth. If we were to drive an average of 50 miles per hour, it would take almost 5,000 hours, 200 days, to drive to the moon. But Apollo astronauts were able to fly there by rocket in just over 78 hours, 3 days, 6 hours, to reach lunar orbit. Why is all of this important? After all, aren't we talking about social structures? What do the planets, the moon, the sun, and galaxies have to do with social structures? Imagine riding in a car at the 2,288 miles per hour, orbiting speed of the moon. It would take a lot of very perfect and strong structure in the car, and in the surface it is on, to go anywhere near the speed the moon is orbiting. Social structures of all the people on Earth move faster than all of these speeds combined. Imagine how much speed is involved in all the minds of the 8 billion people on Earth making our social structures work. It takes the capacity of every mind here now, in the past and to come, to build the social structures needed. Our social structures have to ultimately be more perfect and stronger than all of these physical structures. So far there has been no social structure strong enough to ultimately endure the elements that have come against it. But I'm about to tell you how that works, and how it can be done. Are you tired of confusion and chaos in government, economics, religion, and so much more? It doesn't have to be that way. We don't need wars to make our social structures stable. In fact, we need no more war for ultimate stability, and that is doable. We don't need turmoil to have strong faith-based beliefs. We need something in faith-based beliefs that has been taught from the beginning and repeatedly left behind. We don't need extreme wealth for our nations throughout the world to be strong. We need our people to be stable, and that strengthens us more than any extreme wealth whether some are more wealthy than others or not. Liberal and progressive are not left or right, but egalitarianism, which is freedom, justice, equality, and unity, is the glue and the central focus that binds all social structures together. There is not one person who does not depend on all other people for success in life. The richest to the poorest and the poorest to richest, the strongest to the weakest and the weakest to the strongest, big and little faith and so much more. Every person's strengths, gifts, and talents are needed for everyone to have ultimate successes based on the structures of our universe. Our ideas, our strengths, and our social structures can become our ultimate strengths. My name is Robbie Oosley, and I am doing this presentation publicly for the very first time to introduce the Robbie Oosley Superdynamic Social Stratosphere. The ultimate model of social structures to you this presentation will bring a brand new perspective to your life, making a living, pursuing happiness, faith, and relationships. My model of social structures comes from the smallest microscopic elements to the largest structures in the universe, and everything between. Social interactions and social structures work the same way as everything else in existence, and understanding this model of social structure tells us some things about our existence we haven't recognized before. I can't wait to share all of this with you, and I'm including an extra bonus segment at the end that reveals more and more to come. 
Welcome to the maiden introduction voyage of the Robbie Oosley Superdynamic Social Stratosphere. I'm going to share the model in five parts. Keep in mind throughout this process that you don't have to catch everything. It's a new perspective. Some catch on fast, and others take time to think about it, both valid, and it's good to take time to think about overtime. Watch this series again, as needed, and follow my videos, posts, and website to continue seeing more thorough information over time. In Part 1, I'm going to show how natural and far-reaching the model is in nature. In Part 2, I'm going to share layouts of how others have tried to explain social interactions and how they relate to my model. In Part 3, I'm going to share the layout and meaning of my model. In Part 4, uh, I'm going to share some more natural and man-made structures with fundamental effects, and those will usher us into the chart and flow of my model. In Part 5, I'm going to share some examples of how the model is used in our daily lives without even realizing that we don't even have to recognize it to begin understanding it all. In Bonus Part 6, once you have seen Parts 1 through 5, you'll be ready to see the simple model I started with. I'll give you a few more pieces of bonus information that turns the tables on nature and our universe. Once you see how much our social interactions are patterned after nature around us, it'll also be easy to see how this understanding shows us something in nature that people have not understood until now. I also have a special gift to share with you to help with having free Rosetz models of your own. Share them with kids. Use them to show others what social structure is. Having at least one around helps us consider all of the social structure and possibilities we are a part of. Just think of how much better social interactions can be when we know what is going on behind those actions. Helping make things better is what the Robbie Oosley Super Dynamic Social Stratosphere is all about. Once we understand how social interactions work, we can understand each other and others and know how everything can work together better. Leonardo Pisano Bigolo, known as Fibonacci, was educated in Algeria, on the northern coast of Africa, just across the Tyrrhenian Sea from Pisa, Italy, where he was born. Fibonacci published a book in the year 1202, laying out the Hindu-Arabic arithmetic that was useful for tracking profits, losses, remaining loan balances, and such. This book also included what we call the Fibonacci sequence, because he was who brought it to the European world. Actually, it was what he learned from Hindu-Arabic mathematicians between 450 and 200 BCE. The sequence was included in literature in India. The earliest known mention of this sequence was used in ancient Hindu poetry and religious texts as far back as 1200 BC. The Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers where each number is the sum of the two preceding numbers. The sequence starts with 0, then 1, and 1 again because 0 plus 1 is 1 then continues with 1 plus 1 equals 2, then 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, and so on to infinity. The Fibonacci sequence depicts a very special shape found throughout nature. Now it is called the golden spiral. The Fibonacci sequence is a fascinating and beautiful mathematical object. It has been studied by mathematicians for centuries, and it continues to be a source of wonder and inspiration. Let's look at where the Fibonacci sequence can be found in nature. Plant spirals. Aloe plants grow in spirals. Roses grow in spirals, yellow roses. Pink roses. Purple roses.
red roses. Right off the bat, I wanted to share that the spiral of roses and the rosette spiral of the aloe plant, among others, make ROSIDS an appropriate acronym, or acro name as we might say here, for the Robbie Oosley Superdynamic Social Stratosphere. And the red rose background is from the rose garden, after a misty rain, at my home here in Indiana. The small e is not only for easy pronunciation, but e represents a special number. I will share that at a later time. In the meantime, you can look the number E up online if you'd like to get an idea of how it might relate to the Rosette's social structure model. Infinite numbers are an amazing part of universal structures, including social structures. The trunks of chestnut trees can sometimes spiral, forming a helix-like pattern. This is caused by the way that the tree grows. As the tree grows, the cambium layer, which is the outermost layer of cells, produces new cells. These new cells are added to the surface of the trunk and arrange into a spiral pattern. This spiral pattern is what causes the trunk to twist. The spiral pattern is often very pronounced, and it can be a striking feature of the tree. It most likely has something to do with the way that the tree absorbs sunlight. The spiral pattern allows the tree to maximize its exposure to sunlight, which is essential for photosynthesis. The spiral pattern in chestnut tree trunks is a beautiful and unique feature. It is a reminder of the amazing things that nature can create. The spiral pattern is a popular subject for artists and photographers. Spirals bring strength to protective shells and allow long little beings to slide easily into their sleeping bags. The spiraling shells of sea and land creatures are a beautiful and fascinating example of the Fibonacci sequence in nature. The spiraling shells are formed by the way the animals grow. It adds new material to the outside of the shell. The new material is added in a spiral pattern and continues to grow as the animal grows. The spiral pattern is often very pronounced and it can be a striking feature of the shell. The spiral patterns also relate to the way the animals move. It helps the animal move more efficiently and strengthens the shell for protection. The spiral patterns in the shells are beautiful and unique features. It is another reminder of the amazing things in nature. Some examples of creatures with spiraling shells are for seashells, there are snails, limpets, whelks, conchs, nautiluses, abalone, cowries, murex, and tridacna. For land creatures, there are snails, slugs, tortoises, armadillos, and turtles. The prismatic spiraling pattern in St. John's chamomile and helianthus flower seeds is a result of the way the seeds are arranged in the flower head. This spiral pattern allows the seeds to be packed more efficiently and helps them be more evenly distributed when the seeds are dispersed, which helps to ensure that they are more likely to germinate and grow into new plants. Again, it is a reminder of how amazing things are in nature. More amazing facts about the spiral pattern in flowers are, it is most common in sunflowers, daisies, and other members of the daisy family. It can be clockwise or counterclockwise or both. It can be seen in young and old flowers, it does not affect the health of the flower. It is a popular subject for artists and photographers. It is another beautiful and fascinating example of the Fibo Nasi sequence in nature. Pineapples have a spiral pattern on their skin that is caused by the way the fruit grows. Pineapples grow leaves in a spiral pattern, and as the fruit grows, it adds new layers of flesh around the leaves. This creates a spiral pattern on the skin of the pineapple. The number of spirals and leaves on a pineapple are usually Fibonacci sequence numbers. It is another way nature minimizes waste and maximizes efficiency. Pineapple spirals help balance the weight evenly and increase the absorption of sunlight. 
The spiral pattern on a pineapple is yet another fascinating example of the beauty and efficiency of nature. It is a reminder that even the simplest things in nature can be complex and beautiful. The spirals on a pine cone are arranged in spiral patterns, which allows the scales to be packed more efficiently and ensures they are evenly distributed when the cone opens and releases its seeds. The number of spirals on a pine cone can vary, but usually match Fibonacci sequence numbers. These spirals serve a functional purpose by increasing the surface area of the cone to absorb more sunlight. The spiral patterns also have a prismatic shape, meaning the flat surfaces are arranged in a geometric pattern to help distribute the weight evenly. The spiral pattern and prismatic shape of the pine cone are a result of how the cone starts out as a small round bud. As the cone grows, the scales are added in the spiral pattern in a way that creates the prismatic shape. The spiral pattern and the prismatic shape of the pine cone are both beautiful and functional features that make the pine cone a strong and efficient structure that is well suited to its environment. The patterns on a pine cone are fascinating examples of the beauty and efficiency of nature. It is a reminder that even the simplest things in nature can be complex and beautiful. Spirals are a common feature in animal horns. They are in the horns of many different animals, including goats, sheep, rams, bulls, and antelopes. The spirals in animal horns serve a number of purposes, to provide strength and durability, to distribute stress evenly, to make breaks less likely, to provide protection, and to deflect blows from predators. Spiral horns also serve decorative purposes as symbols of strength and power. The spirals in a horn are arranged in the Fibonacci sequence. The spiral shape of the horn is a result of the way the horn grows. Starting out as a small round bud, the cells at the tip divide and grow in a spiral pattern. The spirals in animal horns are fascinating and beautiful and functional features of efficiency of nature. Spirals help make horns strong, durable, and efficient structures that are well suited to their environment. Spiral animal horns are a testament of natural ingenuity of strength, durability, and beautiful structures from simple materials. Spirals are a common feature in animal tails. They can be found in the tails of many different animals, including lizards, snakes, and some mammals, such as the lion. The spirals in animal tails are thought to serve a number of purposes to provide balance, to distribute weight evenly, to maintain its balance, to provide protection, to deflect blows from predators, and to avoid injuries. Some animals hang and swing with their lengthwise spiral tail. Some animal tails serve a decorative purpose. Animal tails like lizards and snakes are symbols of power and strength. The spirals in tails are arranged in the Fibonacci sequence. The spiral shape of the tail is a result of the way the tail grows. The tail starts out as a small round bud, and as the tail grows, cells divide and grow in a spiral pattern. Some examples of animals with spiral tails are the tails of many lizards, such as geckos and chameleons, the tails of many snakes, such as pythons and boas, the tails of some mammals, such as lions and tigers. The spirals in animal tails are fascinating, beautiful and functional features of efficiency of nature. They are testaments to natural ingenuity of strength, durability, and beautiful structures from simple materials. The spirals in animal tails are beautiful and functional features, well suited to their environment. Spirals in water waves create a beautiful and fascinating phenomenon Curved wave crests start out as open spirals and transform into closed spirals as they fall forward. The weight of the water and the atmosphere interact, causing the water to loop into its spiral form. The formation of these spirals is influenced by the Fibonacci sequence, by minimizing waste and maximizing efficiency. It shows how waves naturally increase in strength by the design of these patterns in their crests. Spirals can also be observed in the interactions between waves. When two waves meet, they create a mesmerizing pattern known as a turbulence vortex. 
It is very similar to the prismatic designs in pine cones, flower seeds, and pineapples. Flowing water tends to follow the path of least resistance, resulting in a spiral pattern that enables a smooth flow and efficient energy transfer. These spirals can be witnessed in oceans, rivers, and even in household bathtubs, where the graceful movement of water creates captivating visual displays. Spirals in water waves captivate us with their elegance and power, showcasing the remarkable wonders of the natural world. They serve as a reminder of the intricate principles governing the laws of physics and the extraordinary beauty that surrounds us. Whether it is the gentle ripples in a pond, or the majestic waves crashing on a shore, these spirals highlight nature's ability to create harmonious patterns. Spirals can be seen in the shape of a vortex, forming a rotating column of water influenced by temperatures, wind, and water currents. A vortex rotates into a spiral shape because of the movement of water molecules within it. The formation of spirals in water vortices is influenced by the Fibonacci sequence, by reflecting the natural efficiency and waste reduction evident in water vortices' spirals. Water naturally follows in the path of least resistance, resulting in a spiral pattern that generates smooth flow and energy transfer. Water can create a spiral vortex as it flows down a drain or in the wake of a boat. Spirals in water vortices capture our attention, serving as a reminder of the extraordinary wonders of the natural world and the principles that govern it. They embody the ingenuity and beauty found in natural phenomena, igniting our imagination and curiosity. Whether in the graceful whirls of a small whirlpool or the forceful spirals of a turbulent storm, spirals emphasize the immense power associated with these dynamic phenomena. Characterized by a violently rotating column of air, these spirals are responsible for the distinct and often destructive appearance of tornadoes. Caused by the very quick rotation of the air, this spiral vortex can vary. Most tornadoes have between two and six spirals. The size of tornado spirals is also variable, typically from a few feet to a few hundred feet across. Tornado spirals are not always perfectly symmetrical and can be quite irregular in shape because the air within a tornado is constantly moving and changing. The formation of spirals in tornado vortexes is driven by the dynamics of atmospheric conditions. A central, powerful updraft of air rapidly rises into a rotation within the widening vortex. The inner core of the tornado often contains tighter and faster spirals, while the outer regions may display larger and more elongated spiraling patterns. These spirals are indicative of the violent rotational forces at work within the tornado vortex. This rotational flow is strengthened by the extreme energy and pressure differences in tornadoes. Spirals in tornado vortexes demonstrate the raw power of nature. They remind us of the forces that shape our atmosphere and universe for that matter and can have profound impacts on the environment. They evoke a sense of wonder at the intricate dynamics occurring within these extraordinary weather events. Hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons are spiral vortexes intermixed between the atmosphere and water temperatures. Hurricanes can cause significant storm surge, raising water levels, long-lasting heavy rainfall, flash floods, and mudslides. Hurricane cloud bands can span hundreds of miles across and affect large coastal regions, states, and even countries. The Coriolis force is what causes hurricanes to spin in a particular direction. Coriolis force is named for the French mathematician Gaspar Gustave de Coriolis, who published work on the effect in the 1800s. The direction of spin depends on which side of the equator it's on. Hurricanes spin counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. It is interesting that the inside, lower part of a hurricane goes one direction, while the exterior, upper part, spins the other direction.
Atoms are one of the tiniest structures in existence, so small they're not even visible in a microscope. Atoms don't really spiral into contained orbits like they have been portrayed for a hundred years. It has been a good depiction to help people understand the atom better. But they do have spinning parts and interactions with forces like large structures. Magnetic and gravitational forces contain spinning structures and ultimately collect matter into circles, ovals, and spheres. As an example of how extensive physical structure and therefore social structures can be, let's look at an example that affects every person. Spirals are part of the tiniest, most invisible structures to the largest. Biological spirals include the DNA double helix. Here are some rough calculations. There are about 204 billion atoms in each strand of DNA, about 92 DNA strands in each human cell, about 37.2 trillion cells in the human body. This rounds to seven octillion atoms in the human body, 27 zeros. There are seven billion people alive today. It is estimated that a total of 107 billion people have ever lived. It would take 65 and a half quadrillion people to match the number of atoms in one person. Why do I bring this up in this presentation? The number of atoms in one person would be in the neighborhood of the number of scenarios in the social stratospheres affecting all humanity at any one time. In other words, it is innumerable. But the more we find agreement, the more focused all those scenarios come together to build up humanity. Spirals, circles, and swirls are part of the individuality in fingerprints. The concept of uniqueness and individuality can be associated with both spirals and fingerprints. Just as each person has unique fingerprints, various natural spirals exhibit distinct patterns and arrangements. Many animals possess ridged skin patterns on their fingers, toes, and foot pads that are like human fingerprints. Primates such as chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans have unique patterns on their fingertips. Other animals like koalas, pandas, and even some species of rodents also have ridged skin patterns that serve various functions. Human fingerprints are among the most detailed and complex, making them highly distinctive and useful for individual identification. The arrangement of ridges, loops, and whirls on human fingertips is highly unique, with no two individuals having the exact same fingerprint pattern. Even among identical twins, the complexity and uniqueness of human fingerprints are notable features that set them apart. Ears. Besides the spiral shape of the outer ear that captures sound waves, the cochlea is a spiral-shaped tube deep in the inner ear that is filled with fluid. When sound waves enter the ear, they cause the fluid to vibrate. These vibrations are converted into electrical signals that are sent to the brain, where they are interpreted as sound. The spiral shape of the cochlea allows it to act as a frequency filter. Different frequencies of sound waves cause different parts of the cochlea to vibrate. This means that the brain can distinguish between different frequencies of sound, which is essential for hearing speech and music. It also helps to amplify sound waves. The fluid acts as a resonator, which means that it only amplifies certain frequencies of sound waves. This helps to make sounds louder and easier to hear. The spiral shape of the cochlea is a complex and elegant design that is essential for hearing. It is one of the many amazing features of the human body. The Earth is a rotating sphere moving in a contained orbit around the Sun. The Moon is a rotating sphere moving in a contained orbit around the Earth. A spiral that fans out into a contained 3D sphere is called a spherical spiral. This is relative to how layers of the Rost's model grow from the center core outward into social stratospheres. The Sun, with the entire solar system, is also moving in a spiral path as it moves through space.
term heliocentric model means going around with the front top side toward the center all the time, which is not what planets are doing. The term flat model means every planet would not be visible at least once a year because all planets would be exactly level with the sun and each other. But that isn't what happens either. The term helical model means planets in the solar system orbit the sun in a spiral pattern. There is some conflict about the details of this theory, but it's obvious that the sun with everything in the solar system following along is moving in a spiral pattern within its path around the galaxy. Our Milky Way galaxy has a mind-boggling 100 billion to 400 billion stars. This means there are 100 billion to 400 billion solar systems in our galaxy, many having at least one planet orbiting them. The center of galaxies and some other places throughout the universe have dark and light holes. Dark holes pull everything around it in, while light holes spew everything out. Is it possible that these holes could be moving materials from and to different areas of the universe? We don't know. These holes have extreme hot and cold areas that violently restrict all materials from going any other direction. Dark holes are normally called black holes because they pull so hard that even light can't escape. What I have described and many more things great and small are examples of natural spirals, the Fibonacci sequence, and contained spheres and orbits. The universal strength, the ability to capture and contain in spheres, the ability to cast materials away, the stability and direction. All of this is what the power of spirals can do. A record album, compact disc, hard drive, microchip, and video disc all use spirals to distribute their content. Here are reel-to-reel -reel tapes, storage, movies, cassette tapes, 8-track tapes, and more examples of using spirals to store and share content.
Many books, notebooks, manuals, and training guides have strong spiral bindings. Stairways and roundabouts are spiral ways of lifting people and vehicles to destinations and conserving space in tight areas. Foods use natural and man-made ways of making spirals work for us. Toy slinkies, yo-yos, spinning frisbees, and party decorations use spirals to enhance their appearance and fun uses. Spaceflight utilizes spiral paths to speed up and slow down around celestial bodies. With all that said, batteries are like mini simulations of the Rosettes model. It is something like the electric power created by a spinning core in the center of spheres, the core in atoms, the dark hole galaxies, and other structures throughout the universe. A battery and the electronic power created by spinning cores are both sources of electrical energy even though they work in different ways. A battery uses a chemical reaction to create an electric current from liquid in the core. Electronic power is created by a magnetic field in the center of a sphere by the rotation of the core. A battery is a limited source of energy, while the electronic power created by a spinning core is a constantly renewing source of energy. Batteries can be recharged, but they eventually lose their ability to hold a charge. The electronic power created by a spinning core can be used indefinitely as long as the core is spinning. Thank you for watching part one introduction to the Robbie Usli super dynamic social stratosphere model. Now we're going to switch the spiral gears in part two. I want to share some of the ways others have used to describe how interactions between people work and how they relate to and are different from the Rosettes model.